Hey guys, I'm Danny and this is Capital Cosm, but what this is not is financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Everything in this video is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence. So the Fed hike rates 50 basis points down from the 75 that they've been hiking the last several months. Is this good or bad news? Is this bullish or bearish? We'll take a look. Let's see. The euro is up 0.46%. 0.46%. The pound is up 0.5%. The Australian dollar is up 0.1%. You know, pretty much all of these foreign currencies, it seems, are up with the exception of the yen. And even that was only down 0.07%. Compare that to the DXY, the dollar index. Uh, so this is the dollar compared to all of the other currencies. It's mainly a, a euro and yen basket, really. But the, nevertheless, uh, the, uh, the Dixie was, what we call it, was down. 0.37. Um, the various indices uh, in the stock market, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, all were in the red. The Dow was down 0.42%. The S&P was down 0.61%. And the NASDAQ was down a whopping 0.76%, more so than the rest. Um, that's your heavily uh, levered tech industry. Uh, then we've got the commodities. We've got silver, gold, oil. Silver was up 0.75%. Gold was actually down minus 0.37%. And oil was up a whopping 2.68%. There was actually a time today where gold broke down below 76, I want to say, $76. And I mean, I've got to tell you, it didn't even last a minute until the buyers just like ate this thing right back up. I mean... That's strength. Um, when you see a rebound like that um, and completely unfazed with the Fed decision, um, unlike the rest of the, the aggregate market here across the Dow, the S&P and the NASDAQ, the, the bond market was also up on the foreign side. Everything but the U.S. was in the green. The U.S. 10-year was down uh, minus 0 0.02. The German 10-year, the Italian 10-year, Spanish 10-year, uh, British 10-year, Japanese tenure all up today. Uh, even Bitcoin was up. Uh, not by much, but up nonetheless, especially about Bitcoin standards. Um, you know, if, if this was like 2020 or something. But I guess being up is, you know, even if it's pretty much sideways, is a new green. Uh, Ethereum is down. XRP was down 2.56%. Litecoin was down 2.65%. So... We pretty much see a mixed bag. Essentially, the U.S. market in aggregate is down at the you know at the news of 50 basis point rate hikes, um, but the foreign markets were up. The uh, commodity market was up in large part, as we saw with oil, as we saw with silver, and even though gold wasn't up, it was it wasn't really down by a big by a big margin. So. Kind of a mixed bag. No real strong movement one way or the other. Um, 50 basis points really, you know, despite the fact that it's actually a drawdown from 75 basis points, which is what we've been getting for the last, uh, I don't know, I believe since April um, of this year. Um, 50 basis points is a drawdown, but nonetheless, it is historic. So let's take a look at, at this federal funds rate chart. And this goes all the way back to 1955. And as you can see here, this is pure hockey stick. I mean, it may as well just be a straight line. Nowhere in history, I mean, at least up until 1980 or so, have we gone up this fast, this much, this fast. So not, you know, not from 2015 all the way up to 2019, not from 2004 leading up to the Great Recession, you know, up in 2007. Not at any point here, not in the late 90s, okay, um, leading to the to the tech bubble. You know, you've got to go all the way out to the 1980s. Um, and this is how we killed inflation back then, uh, record high inflation. So 50 basis points, you know, don't scoff at it. It's still pretty big. We, you know, this is uncharted territory for many traders and investors in the market today. I mean... Most people in the market today weren't, you know, weren't trading back in the 1980s. No one has experience to trade in an environment, in a, in a, in a rate hike environment such as this. So, pretty interesting times we live in. 
Here I say, so what, is, what does it mean when stocks sell off and oil rallies during Powell's speech? It means supply deficits don't care about monetary policy. If you're wondering whether energy and commodities will suffer the same fate as all the other asset bubbles, well, you got your answer. And they're not going to. They're not going to suffer the same fate as the S&P. They're not going to suffer the same fate as Dogecoin or whatever, you know, insert crypto here. They're not because they're in short supply. We've underinvested in energy. We've underinvested in the commodity space for the better part of a decade. These things are cyclical and they depend upon investments to drive them back down to a price that, you know, a affordable um, in, a, in a growth like economy. The last commodity bull market was in the late 2000s. That's when you saw oil make its way all the way up to $140. Now, what brought oil down, for example, overinvestment. Overinvestment in the late 2000s when we had the big oil rallies. We had an oversupply of oil, the big shale boom. But ever since then, we've diverted it money and capital away from oil from all these other commodities too copper nickel there just wasn't an incentive to put capital into these markets because we were under the influence that we were moving towards a carbon free world where these hydrocarbons these materials that we dig up from the ground would no longer be needed. Product of good times. A product of cheap money. And this is where we are now. We're, we are in a commodity super cycle. Sure, we've been trading sideways. We've been chopping sideways for a year now almost. So what? These things move in huge time frames. Years. Not days. Not weeks. Not even months. Years. So we moved up quite a bit. 100 to 200 percentage points on the commodity index from 2020 to 2022. What's a little consolidation phase? What's a little consolidation phase in the face of a commodity bull market, a commodity super cycle. Many say might last all the way up to 2030, late 2020s. We're only in the beginning. You've always got to look at this stuff from much bigger time horizons than what we're used to. We plan our lives in days and weeks and months, never in years, rarely in years. But these kind of cycles, they act in years. Some may even act in decades. So that's how you have to view them. Let's take a look at some of the commentary from Jerome Powell today. Uh, Kitco News says, uh, Powell says 50 basis points increase is a step down from 75. 50 basis points is still a historically large increase and we still have some ways to go. So what's he saying? He was giving out hawkish signals as Zero Hedge writes here. He was telling the market, yeah, inflation, it's coming down a bit year over year, inflation growth. CPI was at 7.1. We were expecting it at 7.3. But, I mean, the market's still in perfectly good health. We are not going to give the market its rate height. It's sorry, its rate cuts if it's still in good health. I mean, think about it. If you go to the doctor, 
and the doctor doesn't give you any medicine, then what do you, I mean, what, what do you come out of that? You think to yourself, okay, well, I guess I'm in good shape. If the doctor gives you the medicine, in this case, the rate hikes from Jerome Powell, it implies that you're in poor health. The economy is in poor health. The market is always forward looking. Why did we rally on the news of a low, a lower than expected CPI? Because the market thought the Fed would take its foot off the gas. And we'll see why that is. So Zero Hedge here has a compilation of different charts in, in regards to the Fed funds rate. This first chart. So this shows the market's expectations versus the FOMC, the Fed FOMC members' expectations when it comes to Fed funds rates in 2023. The red here is the market's expectations. These blue dots is each individual FOMC member. And this lighter red line is the, the median, um, the median of all these dots. So the Delta between the difference between this line and this line is how much the market is underpricing is underestimating future rate hikes. It's quite a lot. It's actually more now than it's been all, all not only all year, but for a couple of years. You know, this goes all the way back to September of 2020. So the market still hasn't wrapped its head around what Jerome Powell's doing. What his true, what his intentions are, what the Fed's intentions are. So this says, with the market expecting rates to be lower than current levels by 2024. So the market is expecting rates to go down by 2024. They're expecting rates to go down to 4.2%. So we're currently around 4.25 here, right? This is the current day. Let's blow this up. This is the current month. And... This is, these are the rate hikes that the market is priced in. So the market is anticipating that we peak around April and May. This will take us all the way up to 4.9% on the Fed funds rate. And then we start coming down after that. And then by January of 2024, we're at 4.2%. And my apologies, uh, I'm, what I meant is 4.35% currently. So by around this time next year, the market is expecting us to be negative where we're at. But again, as we saw here above, that's not what the FOMC is thinking. What does that say about stocks? They haven't fully priced in the, the magnitude of what the Fed truly intends to do, if they do it. <sighs> so, uh, so this is a chart across um, a variety of different asset classes, including gold, the dollar. And we can see here, it says since November 2nd, FOMC statement and hawkish press conference chaos gold and bonds have dramatically outperformed stocks have rallied as the dollar and crypto tumbled so slow this up we've got the dollar and crypto here in red here's the dollar here's uh xbt i'm not sure what that is actually i think that's uh that's like some aggregate aggregate crypto number but you know, we these have actually underperformed um, in the last couple of months relative to the gold, for example, and the 20 year treasury bonds. And essentially what Zero Hedge is trying to paint a picture of is that 
Despite the fact that the Fed and Jerome Powell use these words, these, these pleasantries of wanting to provide a soft landing for the economy, it looks like they're anticipating a recession. So here it says, as Bloomberg's Chris Ants Anstey notes, looking at the median forecast for economic growth and the jobless rate, Fed policymakers are basically predicting a recession. A 0.5% gain for GDP in the fourth quarter of next year compared with the current quarter could easily incorporate two or three quarters of contraction. And the jobless rate rising by almost one percentage point, that's an outlook that is pretty consistent with a recession. So, it's all there. It's all there. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got today. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, please. Um, give this video a like if you liked it. Give it a dislike if you didn't like it and you want me to talk about something else or there's anything else that you want me to um, kind of cover. Um, follow me on Twitter as well. I, my handle is at Capital Cosm. I pretty much aggregate all the news stories, all the news stories that I uh, show to you through these videos. And um, yeah, uh, you guys have a good one. Until next time.